The Cubs' best decision of the last 100 years was hiring Theo Epstein. There was no island involved with him, but there was a damn good baseball mind. He was Boston's general manager in 2004 whenever they broke the curse. You know, the 86-year curse where they didn't win a World Series. So if there was any man who was going to be helping out the Cubs, it would be Epstein. And almost immediately, his drafting made a very positive impact. In his second draft with the team, he took Chris Bryant in the first round a future MVP superstar for Chicago. And then in 2014, he took Kyle Schwarber with a fourth overall pick. Many people actually criticized the move at the time, saying that his defense was really, really bad and that it was a bad pick. But clearly, it ended up working out very well. And then the very next season, he took an outfielder in Ian Happ in the first round, a switch hitter with a very bright future. Hitting on all of these draft picks ended up leading to a World Series appearance in 2016, where they won and broke the curse of the Billy Goat. Epstein did it again with another curse broken. But unfortunately, all good things come to an end, and that's the realization that Theo had to come to. And by the end of 2020, the core of the team was about to be split up, and Epstein was not going to be the one to do it, so November 20th of 2020, he stepped down as the general manager. But on the bright side, there was light at the end of the tunnel. It's tough to have someone better than Theo Epstein, but it is possible to move on to another smart and bright baseball mind. Someone who was ready for the role of president of baseball operations. Jed Hoyer. He had been in the room with Theo his entire tenure, so he understood what it took for the job and how to build a World Series contender. Hoyer was going to be tasked with a very tough thing. Trading away Schwarber, Baez, Bryant, Rizzo, and more. The fan favorites of that team. And obviously, when you trade away fan favorites, the fans start to turn on you. But Hoyer knew exactly what he was doing. He was building a team from the ground up, starting over. And by trading away star shortstop Javier Baez, he got in return Pete Crow Armstrong. Armstrong has since turned into the number one Cubs prospect. Hoyer knew exactly what he was doing. He just needed trust from this fan base. After disassembling the core, they had a bad 2022, but they made other moves for the 2023 season. Hoyer saw multiple opportunities with multiple different players, and one of those players being a former Rookie of the Year winner, former MVP, Cody Bellinger. But here's the thing. It was a one-year prove-it deal with an opt-out. Bellinger had to come to Chicago and revamp the problems that he was having. He had shoulder surgery in 2020, which made him have the worst swing in baseball. 2023 came around, and almost immediately, we saw a new Cody Bellinger. He may not have been the 2019 MVP again, but he was a very good shell of his former self, providing incredible defense and incredible offense. Without him on that team, I'm not sure how their season would have actually gone. But regardless, they did miss the postseason. They had a record of 83 and 79, and the fans were ready for significant change. They wanted the ownership to show up and spend money, break the bank, and burn some cash. And that's exactly what they did when they hired a brand new manager in Craig Council. Council got a five year deal worth $40 million signaling the era of new Chicago Cubs baseball. The first major player decision that they had this offseason was do they bring back Marcus Stroman or do they go another route? Stroman had a good two years with Chicago, so it wouldn't have hurt to bring him back. But they decided to go with another route, a completely different player. His name was Shota Iminaga, a player who had a lot of success in Japan, but had never pitched in MLB. He's 30 years old, and he's expected to be very good for Chicago. Iminaga is someone I would be very excited about. Plus, they spent top dollar money to go and get him, paying $53 million for four seasons. Shota isn't the best player to ever come from Japan. He's not Kodai Senga. He's not Yamamoto. But he's a very good player for this rotation. They also even later signed another pitcher for the bullpen. And that was Hector Neeris. Neeris had a really good year last year. I mean, a 171 ERA, plus the year before that, he won the World Series with the Astros. If he's able to translate that into Chicago's bullpen, that'll be a huge boost for the team. 
and he's also doing it at a pretty low price. One year, $9 million, which is relatively cheap whenever you look at other deals across the league. I refer to the year oldest Chapman contract. Chapman has not even been as good as Neeris, yet he got one year, $10 million, making more than Neeris, which just shows you how great of a bargain that the Cubs truly just got. That contract was great, but I'm not sure that it was quite as great as the next one where they re-signed Cody Bellinger to a three-year deal worth 80 mil. He's a Scott Boris client, and he was waiting and waiting and waiting for the day that he got a mega deal. That deal never came, and he instead had to settle for this contract. Now, there's an opt-out after year one and year two, so if he does have another very productive season, there's a very good shot that he hits the open market. Bellinger is still 28 years old, so he's not even in his 30s, meaning that the Cubs can probably go and get a prime year out of Bellinger still. But even after making all these signings, all these big decisions, there is still a narrative that the Cubs have had a bad offseason. People are still not liking what they've done, and I just think it is absolutely silly. Iminaga, Neeris, a brand new manager, and last but certainly not least, Bellinger. That's an offseason. Compare the Cubs offseason to the other teams in the NL Central. It's expected the Reds will be competing with the Cubs for first place. The Reds still have a very young team, and I'm not sure that they will be able to keep up with the talent that the Cubs have. In 2023, the Cubs had 83 wins, while the Reds had 82. The Reds have so far added two impact players in this offseason. Pitcher Frankie Montes, who could actually be a big steal. I'm a big fan of the move. You look at Montes, and he pitched very, very well in the past. If he could stay healthy, he could rebound. They also added the former Cub, Jameer Candelario. They had a good offseason, but it is not quite good enough to go and put them in front of the Cubs. And then the rest of the NL Central, it's really just in a very odd spot. The Cardinals, they spent money, but it was all on veteran pitchers who are past their prime. The Brewers, they obviously lost Burns, and Woodruff is going to be injured all year. The Pirates, they just stuck to their tradition of one-year deals. This division to me is Chicago's. And what's really interesting is that Chicago might not actually be done, and that's not even according to me. That is according to an MLB reporter, and MLB reporter believes that Bellinger might not be the only move that they make. There have been reports that the Cubs are interested in Matt Chapman, the third baseman who has won the Gold Glove Award four times. If they went and they got Matt Chapman, that would be a massive success. He's a Scott Boris client as well, so what if he says, okay, I'll sign a two-year contract, but there's going to be an opt-out after year one, so if I have a good year, I test free agency. It could happen, but I guess we'll see. Anyways, if you did enjoy, please subscribe. If not, thanks for watching anyway, and peace out.